2005. The Dallas Cowboys went 9 and 7. They finished 3rd in the NFC East and did not qualify for the playoffs. On paper, that season and team would seem to be quite average and unremarkable. Yet when you take a look at the coaching staff, you realize that this team had arguably the most talented collection of coaches in NFL history. In total, that staff had six future NFL head coaches, as well as two other college football head coaches. This is the story of these coaches and how the Cowboys failed to make the most of their staff. Before we talk about the assistant coaches, we must first talk about the head man, Bill Parcells. 2005 was the third of Bill's four years in Dallas. He would retire as a coach after the 2006 season. Widely known as one of the best coaches in NFL history, Parcells is a Pro Football Hall of Famer and two-time Super Bowl champion. Yet, his four-year stint with the Cowboys didn't go great. He never won more than 10 regular season games and failed to win a single playoff game. Yet the legacy he left through his coaching staff has been incredible. To begin, let's look at the coordinators of the 2005 Dallas Cowboys. The offense was led by Sean Payton. Considered a bright young offensive mind, 2005 was the last season that Payton would spend with the Cowboys. In 2006, he was hired to be the head coach of the New Orleans Saints. In the 13 seasons he's coached in New Orleans, he's maintained a winning percentage of 63% while winning a Super Bowl and making the playoffs eight times. He's established himself as legitimately one of the greatest coaches in NFL history. The defensive coordinator of the 2005 Dallas Cowboys was Mike Zimmer. He did a great job in Dallas, but didn't have the same hype as Peyton. He left the Cowboys when Parcells did, and had to spend another seven years as a defensive coordinator with the Falcons and Bengals, before finally getting a head coaching chance with the Minnesota Vikings in 2014. And in his six years in Minnesota, Zimmer has been a resounding success. He's won at a 60% clip, and has advanced in the playoffs multiple times. But it's not just the coordinators of the 2005 Cowboys that have found success. Secondary coach Todd Bowles ended up getting a head coaching gig in 2015 with the New York Jets. Largely due to factors outside of his control, his stint in the Big Apple didn't go great, but he still managed to win an impressive 10 games in 2015. Regardless, he's emerged as an elite defensive coordinator, even winning the assistant coach of the year award in 2014, due to his fantastic work with the Arizona Cardinals. The 2005 Cowboys offensive line coach was Tony Sperano. Sperano would go on to spend four years in charge of the Miami Dolphins. The year before he arrived, Miami went 1-15, but his first year, the Dolphins went 11-5 and made the playoffs. He introduced the groundbreaking Wildcat offense and led a fabulous rushing offense. He unfortunately passed in 2018, but Sperano's legacy as an innovative offensive mind will always be remembered. The wide receiver coach of the 05 Cowboys was Todd Haley. Haley went on to establish himself as an elite offensive coordinator with the Cardinals before spending three years in charge of the Kansas City Chiefs. Haley's stint in KC wasn't great, but they did win the AFC West and make the playoffs in 2010. Anthony Lynn was the running backs coach of the 2005 Cowboys. He spent another 10 years as a running backs coach before receiving a head gig with the Chargers in 2017. He has a winning record during his three seasons with the Chargers and even won 12 games in 2018. There are two more 05 Cowboys assistants that would go on to become head coaches. However, both took charge of college programs. Mike McIntyre was an assistant secondary coach with the Cowboys, but went on to spend nine years as the head coach of both San Jose State and Colorado. He even went on to win AP Coach of the Year in 2016 for his work with the Buffaloes. Paul Pascaloni was the tight ends coach for the 2005 Cowboys, and he's a little bit of a different case. He had already served 15 years as the head coach of the Syracuse Orange, doing a fantastic job. Yet he would become a head coach again after working on the Cowboys staff, as he spent two years in charge of the University of Connecticut from 2011 to 2013. That's it for the roundup of the assistant coaches, but perhaps a bigger question remains. How did the Cowboys end up with none of them sticking around long term? How did they let all of these great coaches leave? Well, it's largely all about the decision making of Jerry Jones. After Parcells retired in 2006, Jones opted not to promote one of the talented young assistant coaches on staff, but instead go for football lifer Wade Phillips. And initially, it seemed like a brilliant move. Phillips led the Cowboys to an outstanding 13-3 record in his first season. He had two more solid years in Dallas before the team imploded in 2010. He was fired halfway through that season. And the next move is where Dallas got it all wrong. They elected to promote offensive coordinator Jason Garrett. It's no secret to any football fan that Garrett has not been a home run hire for the Cowboys. 
In his nine years in charge of Dallas, Garrett has only made the playoffs three times and never gotten past the divisional round. His tenure was really the worst of both worlds. Garrett's teams were always decent enough where it'd be harsh to fire him, but they were never good enough to really contend and compete for a championship. And that's been the problem with how the Cowboys have been run. It's obviously too early to judge Mike McCarthy, but in the past, Dallas has just been too reluctant to take chances on their head coaching vacancies. When Parcells retired, it was a chance to give an opportunity to a talented young assistant in-house. Yet in reality, they went with an uber-experienced, safe football coach in Wade Phillips. Again, when Phillips retired, the Cowboys could have made an exciting appointment, but instead they elevated a Cowboys lifer in Jason Garrett. I mean, his dad was a scout with the team, and Garrett spent most of his playing career with the Cowboys. Rather than looking at the storied coaching tree of Bill Parcells, Jerry Jones chose a super close family friend that he knew would follow all of his orders. And finally, when it became clear early in his tenure that Garrett wasn't the lead head coach, Dallas was unwilling to replace him. They opted for comfort and familiarity over upside and potential. So let this be a lesson. A team can possess an extremely talented coaching staff, but if the coaches aren't given a chance to shine, the team won't reap any benefits. And that'll do it for this one. Share the video with your friends and feel free to subscribe to the channel. Comment, who is the best head coach of those that were on the 2005 staff? Finally, be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and goodbye.